right, people, VMB Podcast episode 63 or 64, Becky, I can't remember what it is. It doesn't yeah. matter anyway. We've got another special guest, Keelan Giles. Thank you, bro, for coming on. Um, we just want to start off by obviously checking on, on you. How are you doing during the lockdown, bro? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm all well. Um, obviously, it is uh, tough times at the moment, but, um, you know, everyone's going for the same sort of thing. Um, just trying to keep safe. Uh, yeah, just trying to crack on with um, my training and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of... Ch- mm. I, haven't been, I haven't been doing much, to be honest with you. I was going to say, how are you staying entertained? Is there anything in particular you're doing? Um, a lot of Call of Duty at the moment. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I've been on there mostly every day. Um, you a Warzone guy or are you like, playing on... Yeah, yeah. Warzone. <clears throat> yeah, there's... Um, there's a good squad of us who go on. Um, I've just been smashed up, to be honest with you. Um, Excellent. I'm in the days then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really a war zone guy. Vecchi, that's more your type of area, bro. So I'm, I'm completely not qualified to speak yeah. about it. When you, when you say my area, I, I, I try my best, but like it's intense. I mean, you, you play with the boys for like half an hour and then it comes, you, you know, usually you don't win. And then you just like, oh. So close, but nah. it passes the time, doesn't it? So, you know, it's good. So quick. Yeah. Try yeah, not yeah. to stay on there too long, like, but yeah. it's uh, very addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that like you and a group of Ospreys boys or just a, like a group of friends from, from back uh, in the day? Doing yeah, it? there's a few. Um, they're all the most rugby boys I play with. Um, mm. I play with Sam Davis from the Dragons, uh, Joe Thomas, who was with uh, Lester Tuck, and uh, Harry Morgan, who's in the Ospreys at the moment. So, oh, okay. You got a, you got a little squad going on then, yeah. Yeah, the quarantine squad at the moment. The quarantine squad. How are the um, the Ospreys looking after you? So, in terms of like you know things like player welfare, you know what are they doing to help you? Not just you know physically, but mentally as well. Are they doing anything in particular for you? Um, we've got like um, um, WRPA, so it's a uh, rugby association, and there's um, a guy in there called Tim Jones who oversees the Ospreys and we've got like a WhatsApp group um, which he's been plugging loads of stuff on um, all kinds of stuff like online courses we can we can get done um, all sort of and, and stuff for the kids for, for guys mm-hmm. who have um, families and stuff um, yeah. and we've been having like sort of quiz nights and, and stuff like that which have been good um, so it is um, it is quite hard to be entertained in, in this of times but um i think they've done a great job um of trying to keep the boys engaged um yeah. what they look like yeah, yeah. What, what um what is a, a typical day for you looking like at the moment maybe compared to what it would be you'd be sort of mid-season um at the moment um i've got myself into a good routine i think that's um key for me if i wasn't in a in a routine i think i'd be all over the shop um, so I, I try and train in the mornings. Um, I try and do my run stuff in the morning. Um, then I'll come back. I'll have some food, um, and then I'll train. Like I, I managed to get some gym stuff. Um, so I train outside in in the garden. Um, so I do my gym stuff then in the afternoon, and then by the time three or four o'clock comes around, I'm in the normal seat. I'll be chilling around then. Um, yeah. The training normally finishes around three, four, so I'd be home chilling anyway. So I'd be in my normal, um, normal routine, um, yeah. like chilling, um, eating most of the time. I've been eating loads, um, <laughs> bro. Everybody has. I've been eating loads, um, so yeah, eating and, and then chilling in the night. Then nice, man. It's, it's more, it's more what people seem to be doing now. Let's say, you know, you, you train in, you know, it's important for you to have a routine probably more than the average person, especially with fitness, things like that. But when you tend to ask a lot of people what they're doing, they're just like, you know, I'm, I'm eating and yeah. I'm watching Netflix and, and obviously it's, uh, it doesn't go much further than that. But um, how is your sort of general fitness at the moment? Because I know you had, had an injury, you're perhaps still on the sidelines kind of thing as well. Yeah, um, so my knee... Um uh november time um yeah. so i've been still traveling to do my rehab and stuff um at home um it's mostly through zoom um i'll zoom my physio 
um, and he'll watch me do my drills and stuff. Um, but I'm, at the moment, because uh, obviously I've, I've I had my op in November, um, I'm up and running and doing most things. So um, it could have been worse. Um, um, and a, a right time where I can crack on and do um, most stuff by myself. Um, but yeah, um, I think I've got another three or four months left now. So um, we're getting okay. towards. So cool. hopefully, by the time rugby comes back, I'll be uh, there thereabouts. Yeah, that leads nicely into my next question. Actually, has there been any sort of um, not correspondence, but any sort of information from the Ospreys as to when you know the Pro 14 is going to be coming back? Um, I don't know. There's been a, a lot of speculation about um, games in August. I, I think they want to try and play two games in August um, just to get uh, rugby back again. Um, in terms of the league, I'm not too sure. Um, I think October, end of October, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it, it depends on what um, the situation is like um, and depends what, what the government say. Because obviously rugby's a lot different to... Um, football, obviously the mm. Bundesliga back um, the other yeah. week, and obviously um, Swans were cleared to train this week. Um, but obviously with rugby, it's a lot um, close contact and and stuff like that. So it's, I think it's a bit more precaution to be to be taken before uh, we get back. Oh, obviously, when rugby does ultimately come back, um, what sort of or how do you think that? We, it'll sort of play out in terms of like, um, like you say, the closeness of the sport and, and the contact is, you know, like um, more than, than football and other sports. Do you think they're going to be making sort of rules like maybe not having like scrums or wrecks or, or, or anything sort of that related? Or do you think there's anything they can do, I suppose, to, um, to help it come back differently to what it is now? Um, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um... Someone, uh, people talking about um, getting rid of the malls and, and the scrums. Um, my point of view, um, and probably every other player, um, well, except from the props, really, is we all <laughs> back. Yeah, um, yeah. Props loves the scrums and, and the malls and stuff, but um, I think everyone does get back playing, but um, everyone wants to come back and play safe. No one wants to be coming back um, with a worry of... Um, catching the disease or or not being safe. Um, so I think, I, I don't know if, I don't know how we'll work or um, if it'll work, but um, we'll have to see it. Um, it. I don't know how it, I don't know how it'd work, but. Um, that That's the thing, isn't it? It's rugby is a contact sport. It's pretty hands-on sport. So like, you, know, you can take away certain elements, but you, you know you're going to be getting up close and personal in, in other parts of it anyway. So yeah, it'll be tough. If you take away the mauling and the scrums, you've still got to tackle and you've still got a ruck. So it's um, you're still in the same in the same boat really. But um, it is a tough one. It, it is it is weird times at the moment, and um, there are some um, question marks and in terms of what's going to happen. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Obviously, football was very outspoken. Um, you know, players like Troy Deeney, for example, I don't know if you saw it, but he was like, look, I have people in my family that have underlying health issues. I, I don't feel comfortable in going back. And I, I appreciate that, but I do feel like sports and or sports players uh, or rugby players or footballers in general, they kind of got the rough end of the stick a little bit. Do you feel a little bit like that as well? Like people kind of were looking down and I'm going, well, we're all going back to work. Why don't you? Um. Yeah, it, it is. It is different, though. I, I think um, what Troy Deeney said was right. Mm. Um, if if there is a chance of him getting it, obviously he doesn't want to harm his family, which is which is totally fine. I, I reckon. Um, this is the, obviously the first time most people have been through all of this. Well, it probably is the first time um, we're in all this um, situation. So. Uh, I think people just want to be safe and, and no one wants to harm um, relatives, families, um, mm. and so on. Um, but I don't know. It's, I don't think we got, we, we got the rough end of the stick, but um, as long as it's safe to come back, then um, I think we'd, be, we'd all be um, happy to come back. 
Yeah. Have you all been tested as well for COVID-19? Is there like a process in place? Um, not at the moment for rugby, I don't think. Um, there's been about that. Um, I think obviously when we do get back to, um, when we get closer back to playing, I think we will um, have to be tested and, and stuff like that. But at the moment, I don't think um, there's any chat of, of that at the moment. Yeah. Um, do you find that it's maybe been, obviously I know it's not the best circumstance for having to happen with, with COVID, but do you find it's maybe been um, a little bit easier mentally given that obviously you had the injury sort of back end of last year, um, obviously a few months after you had the injury, obviously your rugby stopped, you know, and, and nobody's playing. So do you think it's been a little bit easier mentally, obviously not seeing all of your teammates playing and it may, may kind of feel a little bit like pre-season in a way where nobody's playing and you're just sort of just training? Yeah, yeah. I I hate to watch um, the games when I'm when I'm injured. Yeah, I I hate going to watch it just because um, I really want to get out there and I I want to play myself and mm-hmm. uh, it I, th- I think this time in terrible times at the moment. But um, in terms of my injury, it hasn't been um, it hasn't been that bad. And so I can really focus on um, on getting my knee back to normal. Um, I can, I've got that extra bit of time then to get my recovery in. Um, I've got extra time to focus on stuff I need to focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I've got um, an extra few months now. I think um, instead of being rushed back to uh, playing, um, I think we've got a few more months now just to... Um, make sure that my knee is, is flying and ready to go um, and have the games back. Yeah, no, good. Go on, it's, it's almost like hitting the reset button, isn't it? You know, like if this goes on for a few months longer, um, you might be timing your sort of comeback with, with rugby coming back. But since you've had um, a couple of um, knee injuries now, unfortunately, which have set you back a little bit. And yeah. There was, you know, when you were sort of coming on the scene, there was a lot of people talking about um, your potential and you obviously doing a lot of things at regional level and like hopefully for, for Wales. How, how do you sort of deal with injuries mentally, um, sort of obviously getting in the way of your development slightly? Like, are you someone who sort of, you know, looks insane, you know, maybe like blaming something else or are you kind of like a try to be as positive as possible sort of thing? Um, yeah, try and be as positive, uh, positive as possible. Um, what really helps me, um, the, when I done my first knee, I had um, Dan Baker who done his knee um, a week apart. So I had uh, me and him were bouncing, bouncing um, back and forth together. We were doing rehab together. Um, and now this time, I think there's been um, two knee injuries around the same time. Uh, you got Gareth Anscom and Corey Allen. Um, so we've been all doing rehab and stuff together. So um, it is tough. Um, it is tough mentally. Um, but uh, when you've got boys, um, they, they come in at, at a bad day. Um, I've got boys within in the physio room will yeah. will uh, my day up and, and vice versa. If they come in um, quite down, then I could be positive that day and, and bring them up. So it's the company. It, um, is key and, and the physio of the Ospreys are, are great they're, they're good crack as well so um, they keep spirits high go on Becky do you say no, I was just going to say I, I remember the I think it was the first um, knee injury was it against the Dragons or did I get that wrong it was like 2017 yeah Dragons um, I remember obviously you, it was hell of an impact you were, I think you, you kicked it the knee and you were chasing it and took a bit of a knock in the knee um, and no, it's just it's just good to hear that you know that they being positive because as you know I I remember when you were coming on the scene there was a lot of people talking about um, how far you could go and I know you had seasons where you you know you came on the team you scoring a lot of tries um, and no it's good you know obviously um, the injuries they can set people back you know there there are people who who take injuries sort of in a negative way and they say what why it's them but it's good that you've got good guys around you that are. Sort of helping you get back, and yeah, and you you meant to be on top of it as well. Yeah, definitely, bro. The fit, the sooner you know, the better that you get back. You know, we're all rooting for you in that respect. With your kind of career pathway, just sort of steering it towards that for a bit. 
since you know Wayne Pivak took over, has anybody from the international setup actually been in touch with you to discuss your future and your potential, you know, getting a cap? Um, no, no one, no one. I have not um, no chat from uh, from the international camp um, for a while. I think um, yeah. I'm not really any chat from them. Really uh, interesting, yeah. Because obviously, you looking at you and your potential. I mean, look, your potential on the pitches is unlimited and. I suppose with you being one of the rising stars and you know one of the lads with probably the most potential, yeah, I thought it, you know maybe someone would have maybe got in touch with you just to touch bases with you and say, look, yeah, we got we got eyes on you, just you know keep doing what you're doing. So yeah, it's interesting that no one's you know got in touch. You know they've been in touch previously though. Then I'm assuming, you know, was that the old regime that kind of touch bases with you? Um, no, there's there's not much chat to be honest with you. Really, uh, obviously. Uh, when we were in camps and stuff, um, mm. it was there was a little bit, but um, straight after that, not not uh, not too much. To okay, that's yeah. interesting. I mean, in terms of your actual career pathway, do you feel like you're at the point where you you're supposed to be at, or do you still feel like there's a lot more for you to do? Um, yeah, I definitely think there's there's a lot more. Um, there, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. With them um, sort of career pathways, I was looking at, um, I was on IG, I think it was, is it Christian Wade I was looking at the other days in the NFL? Uh, Have you ever considered, you know, things like rugby league or the NFL or, or things of that nature for maybe uh, later down the line? I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't consider NFL. Um, I don't think, I probably don't think that's, that's a game. Um, I played rugby league when I was growing up um, for a year or two. Yeah. And absolutely, um, I'd never say never. To, to rugby league, to be honest, but um, yeah, I played that when I was younger, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, but, yeah, no, that's good. Go on, Becky. Bro. I was going to say, well, I laughed when you mentioned about no NFL. I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of that. It's too much uh, stop starting and listening to people yeah. cheerleading and singing on the pitch for me. Yeah, um, mate. But um, no, I was interested you, you, when you said about not being much chat from um, from the Welsh camp. That that kind of surprises me doesn't really surprise me because you, you hear stories of obviously there's a lot of very good players over here that come out of the region and, and you read about people that people tipped maybe when they first on the scene to play for Wales and they've just never heard anything, you know, like they they have like the whispers or they get into a camp and then for as good as they are and you you know, you've got all of us on social media like Twitter, Facebook, oh why isn't this person getting a cap? You know, this person's ever a cap. But I, I don't know, like the, the link between some of the regions and and the the national side. Some of them just doesn't seem to exist. Like they they don't. No, not like not like being negative about it, but they just like Elon said. You know, you, you would think that maybe they would be keeping an eye on certain players, but the, I just don't think they do. You know, do you know what I mean? Sometimes they like you have their favourites and they have the, the experienced players and stuff like that. But mm. um, I, I know, like obviously Josh Adams. You know, I was in schools and with Josh. He's obviously just. Know, kind of not come out of nowhere, but like he was like you know, he's the first under the scene. But you got George, you know, like he, and George has you know, come back to the Ospreys, um, you know, and he's been figured in it for a while now. But they tend to you know, to stick usually with, with the experienced boys, don't they? And it's, it's hard to break that, um, yeah. Um, I think obviously, um, the wheels coaches do come down, um, to training sometimes, but um, in terms of um. I, I have obviously I haven't had any personal contact, but they do come down to training and um, watch training sometimes. But um, I think that link might be between um, the coaches. I think backroom staff, but yeah, mm. yeah, interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. Actually, I thought there would have been probably more contact, but I suppose it is what it is. I guess um, going back to the Ospreys, there was again you no know, from a sporting standpoint. Um, there was a lot of chat at the start of the lockdown about footballers and, and pay cuts and, and sports stars and pay cuts, which I thought was, was vastly unfair. You know, at the end of the day, having a skill which allows you to be a high earner, that's not a crime. You know, I don't think, again, I don't think people should be getting on at them about that. Did the Ospreys ever come to you as a playing squad and, and discuss like salaries and pay cuts or anything like that at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... They come to us, um, I think, as, yeah, the start of lockdown, I think, um, and mentioned that um, we obviously did have the option to take a pay cut or not. Mm. Um, but obviously, if we didn't take the pay cut, there was obviously going to be um, problems down the line. And um, I think all the boys were keen to 
um, to take that pay cut for the yeah. for the best club, really. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good of them. In fairness, that they would obviously, you know, think maybe two or three steps ahead instead of thinking about the short term. Obviously, yeah. we know you know regional rugby has really struggled financially, and you know the Ospreys will come on to it later. Have had this, you know, situations. What would you do to sort of try and get football crowds? back at rugby, sort of similar size crowds. So, you know, how do the Ospreys get maybe 20,000 every single week consistently? What, what would you do to sort of try and maybe change that? Um, I think at the moment we've got um, uh, the fan base down the Ospreys, I think um, I think they're all around the similar sort of age, I think. Um, mm. I think uh, in a marketing sort of... Um, Sense, I'd, I'd probably um, aim towards the lower, um, lower rate. Probably the younger generation now coming through. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know we, we've. I think the Ospreys now are getting onto that sort of stuff. Um, I know last year we we created an app. Um, there was all sorts of um, stuff behind the scenes going on, um, which I think they get it there. But I think um, that that's that's what I would um, probably do. Mm, yeah. Um, Probably uh, the stadium entertainment as well. I think when I go to watch um, football games and stuff, this uh, the atmosphere there is buzzing. Like, mm, uh, yeah, but, it's a shame, but, isn't it? Because you know, back in the day, it was all about regional rugby, and you go to a regional rugby game, and it was the place to be. Like, you wouldn't even want to go to watch the Swans or Cardiff or or anybody else. And it's kind of just gone the complete other way for some reason. Um, I suppose Premier League football had an impact on it to a degree, but, um, you know, the, an, the Ospreys team is an exciting team. There's a lot of good players in there. So hopefully, um, you know, it, it'll pick up, especially for the financial future of the game. I think it really, really needs it, you know, especially given everything that's going on. Um, just going back again, obviously, to the Ospreys and, and sort of this time last year, there was the whole talk of the merger with the Scarlets. What was your take on it? How did you feel as a player? Were you comfortable with it, or did you think, you know what, this is the last thing I would want to do? Uh, there was a lot of anxiety going around. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. On the play, uh, player side of stuff, um, there was sort of that uncertainty, like what was going on. Mm. Uh, still haunts me to this day, I like, thinking about it, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one knew what was going on. Obviously, yeah. if we did, so many questions, um, if we did merge, what would happen to the remainder of the players? Mm. What's going to be another region up in North Wales? Who would be up in that region in North Wales? Yeah, there was so much um, uncertainty that, um, yeah, we didn't really know what was going on. Um, in the end, I'm glad that we didn't. Um, mm. I think we probably did the best thing there, um, but yeah, it was a, a weird and strange time um, when the merger and stuff was going on. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I I felt for you guys obviously because that's your livelihood, you know. And I think again, a lot of people they kind of take rugby players' positions for granted. Then whilst they earn your know, very decent salaries, they're not football salaries, and you know the the rug was kind of really being pulled from under your feet. So moving forward, I mean, preempting kind of you know, the financial difficulties and, you know, rugby struggles. Again, do you, are you very open-minded now with a career path? Do you think, well, hang on a minute, if that does happen, should I have a plan B and C set aside? Yeah, uh, I'm, um, I'm doing a little bit of studying on the side now. Obviously, with my, um, I started it when i done my first knee because um, obviously there's no guarantee to me um, coming back from my knees. Obviously, mm. you've got to stand, but... Um, Things do happen. It is it is nature. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of studying on the side. Um, I've done my coaching coaching badges, um, and I've I'm in the middle of doing my personal trainer level three at the moment. Oh, okay. uh, so uh, yeah, I've, I've started. I'm only 22 at the moment, so I've, um, I didn't really like school growing up, but I've had to get back into it and uh, start studying again. Yeah, I suppose a good example would be Eli Walker. Obviously, Eli grew up in Cosignan alongside me and, and probably alongside you. And, you know, he was such a star athlete. And then for him to, you know, to have to retire at such a young age, 
Uh, I was yeah, quite gobsmacked when I saw it. But then, as you say, the, it, the wear and tear on your body, even by the time you get to around 25, 26, is just, it's pretty intense. So is he, a, is he a good example of maybe what to do next? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. He's, um, I, when I was growing up, I, I uh, idolised him growing up. He literally yeah. lived around the for me. Mm. Uh, yeah, in, in terms of um, how he's doing now, I, I think he's got his um, business set up. But he's, he's got a degree and stuff, which is um, someone I'd look up to. Um, yeah. And I think he's doing pretty well for himself now. Um, yeah. I know. Ben, I know. He's ben John's the, another one. Is that right, Keelan? He's um, he's uh, another one. Boy, um, he's in London doing. Um, uh, I think he's personal training in London now. Yeah. And I think he's doing really well up there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, them them boys. Uh, obviously, it's it's tough for them to um, to retire um, early, but um, it's inspiring to see what they, what they've done with. Um, with the time of uh, since they've been retired, really. Yeah, no, very true. It just, um, it just highlights kind of the vulnerabilities of being um, in sort of elite sport, doesn't it? Obviously, you rely on, on your bodies. Um, you know, it's it's it's, it's exactly you know it's what you need. So it only takes a few bad injuries to sort of everything you've worked so hard for to sort of you know go go, go up and smoke in front of you. And like you say, Eli is an example of. You, know, you hope that when you start your athletic career that it's going to go on for many years and you can obviously play in hopefully into your 30s. Um, but that doesn't always happen. And obviously people think that people in, in sport, they make all this money and, and they should have this unlimited pot of money. But, you know, you're, if you're lucky, your, your playing career will go into your 30s. But, it's, you know, it's going to last your lifetime, isn't it, with the, the money that you make? So, you, you know, you always hope that people have a plan B and sort of a back, a plan that, you know, like you said about coaching, maybe you can go into something like that and people go into media and, and business and things also. But hopefully when, when uh, you recover from your injury, um, your pace will, you know, will still be there as it was before. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was just uh, sort of, just for fun, around sort of the Ospreys um, team. Are you the quickest one in there or is there a cup? Do you race or do you... There's a... Um, I think last year, um, I think it was between me... Uh, Tom Williams and Luke Morgan, I think, and obviously yeah. George North. Mm. He's there as well. Um, yeah, but Luke Morgan, quick. He's real yeah. quick. Uh, and Tom Williams, they're they're real, uh, real quick lads. Yeah. When um when you run, obviously you're you you're a bit more graceful than George. He's a bit of a a, a bold as he move in. He, he's is, is he as quick? Like I, when I watch George run, it's like. He's fast because he so, seems so huge. I'm like, how fast is he running? Do you know what I mean? Like, have you had a race against George? Do you think you could take him? Um, I don't know. My, now, mine did uh, <laughs> too go, but uh, no, he, he is quick. He's a big man. You, you don't realise how big, big he is until, um, until you're up, up next to him. He's, he's huge. Um, yeah. I think he's bigger than some of the forwards. Um, <laughs> So he's a he's a unit to be fair to him, and um, he's a quality player as well. Um, yeah. He's uh, his skill skill sets class. Like. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever do sort of any like track or athletic stuff when you were sort of before rugby when you were? Like, um, I think I tried. Uh, um, I think one preseason I tried to do uh, athletics. Um, I got done one session, but I think they found out that. Um, I was playing rugby, so I, th- I think they they wanted us. Um, I think they wanted like sprinters and stuff to be down there just to do yeah. athletic. Um, yeah. I went to the ashram, but that was it then, really. Yeah. Um, I've done you- the school and stuff. Um, the hundred meter in in the school uh, school competitions, but that's uh, that's about it then. Yeah. What's uh, what's your best hundred meter time? Have you got one one clock down? Um, we don't really do um, hundred meters. Uh, we normally run uh, forty, I think. But I still haven't done that in in a few years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we used to test. When we were like uh, when we were about sixteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. But after that, then it's it's not much uh, not much testing being on the on the speed sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, on the uh, GPS at the moment, 
because obviously we wear um, GPS monitors when we train. So I think they um, they monitor um, uh, meters per second. I think. So I think that's how they uh, test our speed at the moment. Yeah, I think even on one leg, you'd still do all right on that. I don't think you can have any trouble in fairness with meters per second. Us two might be slightly different. You, I think you're going to be all right when it's all said and done. Though. Like I said, yeah. fingers, you know, we have wise it. It goes okay, and yeah, you know, you can come back even better with um the Osprey teammates. Just going back to what Becky was saying. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. We wanted to ask you a few questions about them. Who is yeah. the, the most intelligent player in the squad? Um, Gareth Evans. Um, he moved to the Ospreys last year from Gloucester. Real smart guy. Yeah. Any topic he he knows. <laughs> but we're doing um, quizzes on the WhatsApp and stuff. He's been smashing them. <laughs> he's probably Talk. just googling it, bro. Right? He's probably not even that smart, to be honest with you. Like that's probably what he's doing. But his that's missus what... next to him on on Google, like yeah, yeah, yeah it happens. He's happens. on the series on the slide. Yeah. Um, Becky was going to ask you, um, obviously, about Alan Wynn, uh, Alan Wynn Jones. Is he yeah. the most intense guy you've ever met in your life? Um, <laughs> uh, nah, he's not the most intense. Is he not? So, not? Edwards is, is definitely the most intense. Sean. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, he, the the, the Sean Edwards smile? Is that a thing? Wait, uh, he come to Coach Osprey's um, no, two years ago. Um, before he went to France, um, I'd never seen him smile so much. He was a hell of a laugh, honestly. Yeah. But he, was he, was so he was proper intense. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine actually. But, so, sorry, go on, Becky, go on. No, obviously, I just, um, with Alan and Jones, obviously, he, he seems obviously intense, and I'm sure he does have his intense moments as a captain and things like that. Obviously, you have to, but. Um, what what is he sort of like to, as a captain compared to maybe other captains that you've had over the years? What sort of, sort of standout sort of qualities that that you noticed about Alan Wynn? Um, he's obviously um, there's obviously like a presence in the room, and when he's in the room, it's obviously everyone everyone knows uh, if he's talking as well. Everyone focuses, everyone um, listens to him. Um, and the big thing, he just leads from the front. Um, you rarely see Alan Wynn make a mistake. Um, mm. And he's always first to every drill. Um, if there's a break in play in games, he's always first there. Kickoffs, he's sprinting, sprinting off the kickoffs. He's, his engine's up. It's, uh, he's, he's a real fit guy and, and he's a real tough man as well, to be fair. He's yeah. a big guy as well, and he's, he's another unit. Yeah. But uh, he's, uh, he, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a good laugh as well. Yeah. He's, uh, when he wants to be, he's a, he's, a, he's a great laugh. Yeah, it's good that he has that balance, obviously, between you know, business and pleasure kind of thing. You, know, you need to have a balance. It's, you know, you could be all one way, like, you know, like a Roy Keane, for example, in football, where he's just you, everything toe the line, toe the line, you've got to do it. And then you've got other captains that are far more relaxed. So, yeah, no, it's good that, um, that he's got that balance. Um, again, going back to, obviously, the, the squad itself, who is the most skillful player in that squad right now, would you say? Uh, right now? Um... You can say yourself if you want, bro, as well. Feel free. I'm not up there. I'm not up there. Um, I'd say Justin Tipperick. Tipperick, yeah. Uh, he's awesome. yeah. So skillful. Um, he's world at the moment mm. um, he's uh, class some of the stuff I've seen him do is is mad um, forward and a back isn't he uh, to break almost then um, he could play centre if, if he really wanted to 100%, 100%. Um, yeah so probably, he's probably the most skillful um, in the team yeah no that's interesting because again obviously that's the general consensus among a lot of rugby pundits and fans and, and even players that play with him, they say he's, he's ridiculously talented. And you know, the fact that you're saying that, it, it kind of validates what they're saying. Now, um, obviously being a rugby player comes with its benefits. Um, and one of those benefits is, you know, you get a lot of attention, shall we say. Who is the biggest ladies' man in the Ospreys dressing room? And again, feel free to say yourself if you want. <laughs> uh, I go with Oak Mocken. I'd oh, walking is there? Oh, okay. 
Oliver Mockins doing all right out Jersey, yeah? Dark horse, mate. Dark he's, horse. He's dark horse, yeah. Bro, I, there's a few girls I know that follow you on Instagram. There's a couple of eight and nines out there. And they're big Keelan Giles fans. Big fans, bro. So I know you're not doing too bad out here either. Nah, not me, mate. Not me. Yeah, you're, he's ducking it. I told you back, he'd duck it, didn't I? I knew he would. Fast too, mate. You, you, you've got to, you've got to swerve the attention. You know, you yeah, can't yeah. it all up like that. No, but obviously, yeah, it comes with its perks. I mean, for you, what, what would you say is the biggest perk of being a professional rugby player? Um, just getting to do what you love every day. Um, do granted sometimes. Um, obviously now looking back, like I'd love to be in training right now. Um. And as tough and um, as grueling as some days are, um, train out in the rain and the mud, sometimes uh, looking back at it now, you miss it so much. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd probably say that's the biggest perk is just um, going into training every day, um, seeing the boys, I'm having a laugh with the boys. Um, and yeah, and just training. It's, um, it's something I really love and someone I uh, really enjoy. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Um, last question from me just before Becky comes back in again. I just wanted to ask you, obviously, in terms, if I said you now, Keelan, pick a seven-side team of the best players that you played with, who would be your seven? Uh, just, um, where did I go? I think we're played with Alan and Jones. Yeah, Alan Wynn, yeah. Um, Josh Mark Vizi. Okay. Um, Dan Evans. <clears throat> uh, Who else? Uh, Webby, uh, Rich Webb. Yeah. Uh, um, who else is. Uh, how many have I picked the... Was if you've picked yourself, yeah, you've got to be in it. So yeah, we we'll let you so, be in it as well, bro, if you so want. So you got one more. I'll be on the bench somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more. Um, Ashley Beck as well. Um, great player. You got there's some people in that side with some wheels. And obviously in, uh, in sevens, there's some space, so I'm sure you score plenty of tries. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, side. Um, yeah, the thing with sevens, on it, you run all, you, you run like crazy, and then you've got to get back. It's I, I used to hate playing sevens more than, than playing, you know, fifteen something because you're just knackered, absolutely knackered constantly. It's uh, it's a tough game, Sam. Yeah. Um Someone I do want to try um, further down the line. Um, I think some, some of my mates play now. Um, some of the younger lads playing for for Wales now. With, um, I'm getting to like travel the world and I'm playing sevens and yeah. some of the st- some of the atmospheres there um, on the sea is uh, is class. Yeah, not true. Um, as you mentioned just now, um, obviously one of the biggest perks to being um, a professional rugby player is doing what you love every day. And that's you know when you said that, that's, that is probably the best thing I would say you can do because so many people, you know, a lot of us work nine to five jobs um, and getting to do what you love every single day is probably one of the biggest perks possible. You mentioned about training um, and how much you'd love to be doing that right now. And one of the questions I had down was um, when you sort of coming back from preseason or, or into training, what did you have any particular drill that you just dreaded or any particular type of, of fitness that, you think, oh, not this again, or oh, I hate this so much. Uh, the 15 test that was, uh, that was a tough old test, that uh, or the yo yo. Um, I don't think they do the yo yo anymore. Um, the one of the moments, um, the Bronco, the Bronco test, um, yeah. that's what we were doing uh, last season and stuff. But I quite enjoy, um, well, not enjoy, but I don't mind, I don't mind doing the Bronco test. Um, yeah. I think it was the thirty fifteen. That was that was the toughest one, um, and we normally do it in uh, Clandarcy in the barn as well, which would be uh, it'd be roasting in there as well. Yeah. So, but. Well, one of the lads I, I told you were coming on I told me to ask you what your sort of Bronco time was and the um, sort of best one of that was, but um, it's quite tough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a gruel test. 
Um, I think most of the boys now, now we've got time off and stuff, I think um, some of them are doing them um, at the moment just to see, uh, see where you're at. Like. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think the other question that I was interested as well in, in wanting to ask was, um, what was your sort of most memorable moment as a rugby player before you turned pro? Because, you know, you've got good moments turning pro, but was you through the signing ranks and things like that. What was your favourite sort of moment in a rugby shirt before you signed your pro contract? Um, uh, school rugby, um, when I was playing, uh, we won the Welsh Cup. Um, we played in Parker Scarlets. Um, I think that was one of the most memorable. Um, I'd probably say that. That we we had a great um, we had a great school side. Um, I think playing for Wales 16s as well and and Wales um, 18s. I think that was up there, um, and obviously Wales 20s as well. Um, yeah. I think they obviously have to be up there, but obviously um, at a younger age, yeah, it was definitely uh, my school rugby days. Cool. I remember. I'm sure I read as well in when you were in Galway College Swansea, were you sort of nominated for like Young Sports Personality of the Year or something like that as well. Uh, yeah, it's obviously a nice little accolade as well to be nominated for something like that. Is that yeah. a Welsh thing or a British thing then? The the sports personality. British, I think. Is it? Um, BBC one. Um, I think I come top three. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that was a kind of a surprise. That did. Um, didn't really think I'd be anywhere near that. But yeah, it was um, it was a nice surprise. It was a nice um, yeah. yeah, like I said, nice. Uh, accolade. It was nice. Who, who, um, who beat you in that game? Who came first and second? Amy Tinkler, I think her name was. Um, I think she was in the Paralympic. Yeah. I think she was a swimmer. Nah, I'm not buying it. You should, you have, yeah, I think you were wrong there, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know how I managed to get myself in there. Rugby yeah. player. Yeah, yeah, no, fair. I didn't know that. Interesting bit of research by Vecchi there. See, he does his due diligence. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty much out of questions, Becky. I'm, I'm kind of done in terms of what I've got to say. Is there anything else you want to bring up? Um, no, I mean, that's everything I've written down. And obviously, we've, we've branched out and elaborated on, on things you've said as well, which is always good. So, no, you've answered everything I actually had written down on, um, on the notes, which is great. There we are. Cool. Keelan, thank you both for coming on. Obviously, no fingers crossed we can do it again when you're back yeah. up and running later, um, later on in the season. And, um, yeah, we wish you well, bro. Hopefully, the rehab goes good. And, um, you know, you're firing on all cylinders. Um, we let you crack on with the rest of your day. Um, add us up on social media. We leave Keelan's Twitter at and IG at on there. All you lovely young ladies out there that are looking for an athlete, he is available. There we go. So, uh, yeah, I've been Rory Spooner. James Vec with me again. Thank you, Keelan. This is the Victory Vices podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, people. Ciao.